The number of people sickened by the coronavirus is still increasing. Chinese state media says that more than 31,000 people have fallen ill worldwide. The death toll now stands at 638 people. And despite the low number of U.S. cases to date, Americans are still stocking up on face masks and other anti-germ products. Joining us right now to talk more about the virus and the global response is David Dorman. He's the chairman of the board at CVS Health. He's also AT&T's former chairman and CEO. And David, it's great to see you this morning. Great to be here. So coronavirus, how, how do you handle that at CVS at this point? What's the... We had a board meeting last week, and our chief medical officer went through sort of the global response and what we expected here. Quite frankly, in the U.S., we've got a flu epidemic going on uh, certain parts of the country more than others. And since we have 9,900 stores spread across the country, we, we see the early indications when flu is breaking out. I think it's pretty clear now that the vaccinations for regular flu this year may be favored A over B or B over A. I forget which one it was, but a lot more flu cases showing up because the flu shot didn't do as much to dampen it. Coronavirus so far in the U.S. is really keeping our eyes and being prepared and clearly not allowing easy transmission through, you know, particularly air travel. Uh, but we're not, there's not a, you know, total all-out panic button right now, but watching it closely. Have you seen an increase in the number of people who come into CVS stores to get flu vaccinations? Because that's been one of the things that the CDC yeah. and others have been telling people to yeah. do. We, we usually start in October. And then you have an early group of people who do it every year. And then as the season breaks out, people, you know, start worrying, oh, gee, maybe I should have one. And it's okay to, to wait as long as you haven't been exposed. The, the shot does its job. It's just that this year the, the uh, recipe that they used, you know, didn't hit exactly what we've seen. Uh, but we do see a pickup in, you know, cold remedies, flu remedies, as well as prescriptions. Tamiflu, uh, you know, w was covered as a... A real, it, it really doesn't do anything except reduce the impact of the virus because it causes it to, you know, sh shrink the amount of time that you're sick. So, uh, doctors are using it more and more as an antiviral. It's a phenomenal. Oh, it product. is. It's if you like... take it within 72 hours, I mean, typically takes a 10-day flu and reduces it to five or six. And the symptoms aren't as, uh, as severe. As, as severe either. I mean, it's like a miracle. Drug it really is. I, I'm surprised it hasn't been more widely used. Is it, can it go ever go over the counter, you think? Well, it's generic now, uh, so but, it, but but still it, need a it still has to be prescribed. It's got some weird side effects, I think, it can It can have weird side effects. David, let's talk a little bit about um, the company and how things have gone since the Aetna purchase. And I realize you're in a quiet period, so there's some things you can't talk about. But well, how We have earnings to, uh, Wednesday, I think it is. Uh, basically, if you look back over the three quarters that we have reported, there's been steady progress along the lines that we said. Mm -hmm. We had to reset guidance effectively at the time we uh, closed the Aetna transaction late in 18. We weren't one company. And so the street got ahead of us, and we, we had to do that in January. We got beaten up for it. But since that time, we've seen a lot of evidence of the integration beginning to take hold. Aetna selling more prescription drug plans. Mm -hmm. That's great for our PBM. Uh, there's cooperation around a lot of chronic disease management programs. We're doing some great stuff in chronic kidney disease. We have a new dialysis, home dialysis, dialysis machine uh, that we have exclusive rights to. This in form, final trials today, but it'll allow people to do dialysis while they sleep, uh, self-administered. Wow. If you look at the stock, though, going back to 2015, it has been under pressure, probably not unusual given some of the federal issues that are out there with uh, Talk about lowering drug prices. Also, just the idea of universal health care. How, how do yeah. you how do you sell all this to Wall Street? Well, we uh, have a wry laugh because you know Amazon makes an announcement that they're buying 11 medical device licenses in states, and our stock goes down four percent. Uh, you know, universal health care, which I think is a a real, real, real long shot, almost impossible given the price tag. Uh, our stock gets beaten up by that. Uh, President Trump makes an announcement about drug pricing. We get beaten up by that. And if you avoid self-administered wounds, look, the external environment is such that it takes the eye off the real story, which is managed care, PBM, retail drug store, retail clinics under one roof. We're changing the front door of health care. We're going to make it more accessible to more people so that your primary care doctor is not an emergency room. In a $10,000 visit, it's a you know, $10 copay at a minute clinic 
or one of our health hubs. We're going to build close to 50 new health hubs a month in 2020, and that ramps up to about 80 a month in 2021. So we'll end up with 1,500 walk-in clinics that you can schedule an appointment on an app uh, and see a nurse practitioner almost immediately. Uh, the, you are shrinking your board from 16 members to 13. One of those leaving is Mark Bertolini, who ran Aetna before. What, why? What happened? Oh, nothing happened. Uh, it's pretty customary for CEOs of companies that have been acquired to spend a you know, brief transition period on the new board. But the real story here is we have 16 directors. Uh, it's been noted by shareholders it's too big. Uh, you should be smaller. Honestly, when we uh, merged with Aetna, we took four directors. We were obligated by contract to take only three. Uh, but they had three outstanding candidates that we didn't we frankly didn't pick between. We just decided we'll increase the size of the board, you know, with the idea that Mark wouldn't be on the board, you know, of his own choice uh, very long. But, you know, Mark has contributed. He's participated in the board. Uh, but at this point, going down to 13, just imagine trying to schedule board meetings with 16 members. David, I want to thank you for your time today. It's great to see you. You bet.